In this video, we are going to see carrier distributions in BJT. To be specific, it's uh, minority carrier distributions in BJT under active region of operation. So let me take the BJT structure here. I am taking this to be x axis and this is emitter, this is base region, this is collector region and as usual as we have considered PNP transistor, here also we are taking PNP transistor, this is P plus and the base is N and the collector is P. Now the doping concentrations on emitter is NE or base NB and on collector NC. And as we are discussing about the active region of operation, when BJT is in active, the emitter junction is forward biased and collector junction is reverse biased. Hence, I have shown here that the depletion widths here are smaller at emitter junction and larger at collector junction. Now coming to the doping concentrations here, we know that NE is far greater than NB and NB is greater than NC. Now the minority carrier concentrations in the emitter, which is let's say called under equilibrium NE0, which is given by NI square over the doping concentration in the emitter and minority carrier concentration which is whole concentration in the base which is PN0 is given by Ni square over NB and electron concentration in the collector under equilibrium is Ni square over NC. Now having known the doping concentration in emitter, base and collector we can say that NE0 would be smaller than PN0 and PN0 would be smaller than NC0. Let me show the equilibrium minority carrier concentrations in this figure, somewhat like this, where this is NC0, this is PN0. Now on the x-axis, let me take this to be the origin reference, and this is W, the base width here, which is effective base width, and this point is XC. Now as the emitter junction is forward biased, that's why we have shown the depletion width is smaller. Now electrons from the base side would get injected into the emitter side and as they diffuse through the emitter the carrier concentration would decrease and assuming the length of the emitter here is greater than the diffusion length of electrons in emitter the carrier concentration would change like this. Now coming to the holes injected from emitter side to the base side obviously would be very high because it's highly doped emitter, hence the carrier concentration on the base side would be higher in concentration. But if we observe this width W, always we tend to have it very small compared to the diffusion length of holes inside the base, in which case W by LP is very very less than 1. And as the depletion region here is higher, and as the collector junction is reverse biased here, there is high electric field here, which is directed from N side to P side. The holes that are coming here would get swept as soon as they reach this W, which means the carrier concentration should become zero when it comes to X equal to W because there is electric field, which would take away any holes that are present here and send it to the collector side. Hence, the carrier concentration should become zero at X equal to W at x equal to 0, the carrier concentration would be high. As W is very small compared to LP, we'll take this a linear profile. When we come to collector junction, which is reverse biased, the current that would be flowing is because of the minority carriers. Of course, here the minority carriers in the base now are holes, which are accounted as part of the current flow already, which is ICP. Now, the current that we have to see is because of the electron concentration in the collector region. Electron concentration should be zero here and it would change like this. Here we have shown all the minority carrier distribution in emitter, base and collector. Now if you remember the currents that we had was emitter current which was given by IEN plus IEP and the collector currents we have discussed were ICP plus ICN. 
So of course, IB was given by IE minus IC. <coughs> now we need to find all these components depending on the carrier distributions we have here. So the current, we can say IEM, the current flowing because of the electrons, which are injected from base to emitter, that is at this point, is QAD, the diffusion coefficient of the electrons in emitter. So I put DE times del N over del X at X is equal to minus XM. So this equation, IEN, can be shown as Q A D E N E naught over L E that is the diffusion length of electrons in emitter times e power V E B over V T minus 1. This is one equation. Now coming to I E P. I E P is given by minus Q A the diffusion coefficient of holes in the base which is n type that is dp del p over del x at x is equal to 0. So that is the carriers flowing per unit time at this point at x equal to 0. We need to find what is p of x. Looking at this carrier concentration distribution, we can say that pn of x is equal to Pn of 0, let's say we know the carrier concentration at x equal to 0 at this point, times 1 minus x over w. So if you look at this at x equal to 0, we have Pn of 0. And at x equal to w, it becomes 0. So it's a linear distribution we are taking here. And of course, we have Pn0, which is equal to Pn0 times e power VEB over Vt. Now, IEP can be written as QADP Pn0 over W times e power VEB over Vt. This is another important equation. Now we know the terms IEN and IEP, which means we know IE. Now let's find what is IC here. So let's find what is ICP first, which is minus Q A DP del P of X over del X. Of course, at this point, it is at X equal to W. If you see here, the amount of carriers flowing per unit time at this point, point would be the amount of carriers crossing this depletion region. So that's what we want to find, which is the ICP, the current because of the holes flowing through the junction from base to collector. So as we know, what is P of X here? So ICP is equal to, it would be the same value as here, because the slope is same. QA DP PN naught by W times C power VEB over VT. This is another important equation. Now, coming to the last, that is ICN. ICN is the current that is flowing because of the minority carrier's electrons in the collector crossing this depletion region, which is nothing but the river saturation current just because of the electrons going from collector to base side. That can be written as ICN is equal to QADCNC0 over L C. This is another important equation. Now we know even I C because we found the expressions for I C P and I C N. Now let me scroll down. In fact, if you observe here, I E P is equal to I C P here. The reason being, we assume that W is very very small compared to the diffusion length of holes in the base. So when we assume the depletion width is very small, the recombination current can be neglected, in which case IEP would be equal to ICP. That's a valid assumption in this condition. Now, we had a term that we defined as emitter injection efficiency, which was given by gamma star, which was in fact equal to IEP over IEP plus IEN. 
In fact, we can say this is IUP over IE, which is equal to, as we know the components now, we can find what is gamma star in terms of device parameters. We can rewrite this equal to 1 over 1 plus IEN over IEP, which is equal to 1 over 1 plus IEN, let's substitute this value here, divided by the IEP, which is QADP PN naught over W times E power VEB over VT. Now we know that the emitter junction is in forward bias, in which case this term would be approximately equal to this term because this one would be very small compared to this exponential value as it is in forward bias. So in that case, we can cancel these two terms and Q, A are common. Let's cancel them. Now we can rewrite this expression as gamma star is equal to 1 over 1 plus D, E, N, E naught times W over D, P times P and naught times L E. This is another important expression. Now, if we observe here, now gamma star can be written in terms of doping concentrations instead of the minority carrier concentrations here. From this, we can figure out that gamma star can be close to 1 if N B over N E is as small as possible. That's one of the reasons why the doping concentration N E is made very, very high compared to base doping concentration. Now in order to uh, improve the injection efficiency, we have to make sure W is as small as possible. That's the reason behind the base width making it as small as possible. In fact, we have found all the current equations here in terms of device parameters and the voltages applied across the junctions. Now, for a very important reason, we are going to uh, take all these equations and represent in a particular format so that it will be used to understand Aber's mole model in a very effective way. So, in order to do that, let me write all the equations in a systematic way. We know IE is equal to IEN plus IEP. We have just found the equations for both of them. So let me put those values here. So this is equal to this term and this is equal to this term. But we're going to add few more terms that is subtract AQDPPN naught over W plus AQDPPN naught over W. So the equation remains the same, but only thing is we want to get this form here as well. So this can be reduced to AQ DE and E naught over LE plus AQ DP PN naught over the depletion width times E power V E B or V T minus 1 plus A Q D P P N naught over W. So this can be written as I E is equal to. So we can say this is the emitter junction leakage current that is I E naught times E power V E B over V T minus 1 plus a Q D P P N naught over W. In fact, this equation will be used when we go and discuss Aber's mole model in the next video. Coming to the second equation, which is I C is equal to I E P plus I E N, which is equal to A Q D P P N naught over W times E power V E B over V T plus a q d c and c naught over l c of course here this term is equal to this term that we have derived and this term is equal to this term now we are going to subtract and add a term which is this term so we can rewrite this expression as i c is equal to this term minus this term, I can take this term common, 
where I would get a q d p p n naught over w times e power v a b over v t minus 1. Now we are left with these two terms. Let me add that up, which is this term we can say as the I C naught, which is basically the leakage current if there is only the collector base junction present and that leakage current would be this I C naught. So the collector junction leakage current. We can further reduce this equation into I C is equal to A Q D P P N naught over W times E power V E B over V T minus 1 plus I C naught.